Welcome to the most overrated, underappreciated, most viewed, underviewed podcast of all time. Welcome to the Prince of Fresh Air. I'm sorry. I know that was annoying. I, I hope I, I didn't hurt anybody ears doing that. That, that was kind of sloppy, but I am the most charismatic man. We are back. <clears throat> I'm back in LA for the for the meantime, a little bit in process of moving. So excuse the, the, the bed in the background. I'm just, uh, you know, just trying to get myself together. Uh, before you know, I bring on Kyle, who who's a returning guest. You know, I got a couple announcements real quick. You know, Dwayne Rock Johnson. You know, I've been hearing whispers. You know that you you know you're trying to compete with me. You know, you're the most electro electrifying man. I'm the most charismatic man. So I'm here to tell you, I with the old and with the new. That's right. Um, and it also came to my attention. Tom Cruise. Uh, he emailed me last night asking me to do Mission Impossible. You know, so uh, we'll see about that. Um. But I do have a couple announcements real quick. So uh, I shot my my uh, episode number fifth for Jubilee Media is going to be out later this summer. I know a lot of people love when I appear on that uh, YouTube channel. So check that out. And also, you know, popular demand, you know, people call me all the times and day, uh, you know, Zoe Saldana, Batista, you know, asking me about, you know, when you're going to do YouTube. Um, so, you know what, I, I, I'm in the business of giving people what they want. So. Without further ado, I am going to be posting uh, videos on YouTube now because I know a lot of people like YouTube. Uh, and uh, I just want to share the charisma with everybody. So, you know, whether you, you know you want to use YouTube, Spotify, whatever the case may be, the video will now be on YouTube. That's right. So, uh, you know, I want my five grand from YouTube immediately uh, because, you know, I am bringing the Kurt Charismatic Podcast on there. But uh, nonetheless... Let's get into the episode. Let's welcome the returning guest, the main man himself, Kyle Yates. Welcome back on, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my buddy Tarek was on your show the other day. And uh, did he give you competition for that whole uh, most charismatic man on the air? Between me and you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know what? We're in different lanes. That's all. It, he... He's very energetic. Like I said, he's like Chris Tucker. He's like Chris Tucker. He's very, very uh, much. energetic. He sounds like him too. He he don't believe me, but I'm telling him. I'm I, I'm I'm sure when the episode comes out, people will be like, "Is that Chris Tucker on there?" But I do like him. He he was great. Uh, I was supposed to have his brother come on with us. But he was gonna have a threesome. Whoa 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 whoa. Let me let me <laughs> not say that. <laughs> but no, his brother's supposed to come on. He couldn't make it. Uh, so it was just us two. And it was a really good uh, episode. I might do another one with them two back on because I know he wants his brother to share his his journey as well, especially in comedy. So I'm, I'll probably get them on within the next couple of weeks for sure. So, But he was good, though. It was a really fun episode for sure. Well, and, uh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. J- Jamil Jamil's going to come on too? Yeah. Apparently, when right before we started, he texted Tarek. It was like, I'm stuck in traffic. It's going to be a minute. So... We, we just did it without him. But, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to have him come on. Because, uh, like I said, I, it, I'm trying to take the podcast in a different direction. You know, I, talking, you know, for the longest I talked about, like I said, you know, police brutality, murders, and all this other, you know, the, you know, the, the, the negative stuff in society. But, you know, as the most charismatic man, it's my duty to entertain people. So if you're driving on a highway, you're watching the kids, you're eating a cheeseburger in and out, you're picking up a, a pizza from Domino's. We are here to have fun. And that's why I brought you on because we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about a lot of stuff. Um, but before we even get to the episode, how you been, man? How how's life treating you? Oh, well, it kicks me in the teeth a few times, but I, I keep going. I'm not gonna let it keep me down. I, I don't blame you. You know, don't let the hair fool you. I'm a hot mess t- sometimes too. You know, my room right now, if I could pan the camera. Yeah, I'd be disgusted with me, but it's because I'm moving right now. My landlord's selling my, my my apartment, so I'm just in the middle of getting everything together. And then I'm going back to New York on Friday. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to being back over there. Uh, but I do love the weather out here. I got to say the weather out here is unmatched. Uh, have you been to LA before? Um, I The only time I've ever been to California, I was like four or five years old. So I don't re- even remember it. I, I do remember slightly when we went to San Diego because we went to the zoo and we did get to go to disneyland it's kind of a blur you know you're talking almost 50 years ago 
Wow. I haven't been, you know what? That's one of my regrets living out here for like the last three, four years. I didn't really travel much. And it's mostly just because I lived downtown. I didn't have a car. So most of the, most of my, besides auditioning, which I usually Uber for, I used to just, my gym where I used to go to work out and work at was like a seven minute walk. So one of my regrets is not traveling enough because I, I hear a lot of good stuff about, uh, Disney. I haven't been to Disney yet, although I do know you need to take out a mortgage to go to Disney because it's not <laughs> cheap anymore. Holy right. crap. Uh, my, You know what? My, my girlfriend's sister and her husband, they go to Disney like twice a year. I mean, wow. I, when I found out how much they spend, I'm like, absolutely not. I, I No, never. Absolutely not. Well, but next year, just ask them to buy me a new car. It'd be cheaper. <laughs> I need my... You know what? <laughs> I'm in my twenties. I still haven't had my first car yet, but it's because I'm, you know, I grew up in New York, public transportation. So that's on my bucket list is to get my first car. Uh, hopefully, I could do that before I'm thirty. That would be perfect. But if not, it's all right. I uh, figured because you got limoed around everywhere. Well, you know what? My security, you know, they, you know, they got lives. You know, they got kids too, so it's hard. But I did tell um, Tom Holland. That uh, when I get my fly, my private jet next week, I, I'll let him ride. He'll he'll pay me for it though, you know, because inflation, uh, gas ain't cheap. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> pay up, pal. Pay up. Give me that Spider Man money. <laughs> right. Uh, so you know, let's get into that episode. You know, you brought something to my attention. Mm -hmm. Paranormal activity, because I know I mentioned you do. Um, you're a paranormal investigator. And funny enough, when you texted me, I've been a big fan of Supernatural. I was I was literally watching Supernatural when you told me about it. And I've been a big fan of that show. And it's definitely, I'm not gonna lie, when I started watching this show when I was in high school, it really made me start to think about paranormal activity a little bit because when I was in college, there was um my my college St. Bonaventure University, there's like a a tale of, you know, back in the 50s and 60s where uh, someone like died in one of the student halls. It was called Dev. Uh, Dev uh, and I remember I, it's trippy, but I remember one time right before I graduated, I was walking. It had to have been like 12 in, in the morning. I was coming back from the uh, the Skeleton, which is like a, like a nice little social area. And I remember looking up because the urban legend was on the fifth floor of the of the building. And I swore I swore a ghost up there. Now I know some people might say he's lying, he he's capping a little bit, but I swore I saw a ghost up there. But you know, before we get too much into it, I I want you to you know elaborate on that. So how did you get into that, and and how's that journey been for you? Wow. Okay. Well, I've I've had a few experiences you know, in my youth. Uh, the first one being um, when I stayed at my grandparents' house. There was one weekend where I had woke up in the middle of the night, and here's a figure standing in the doorway. I mean, it it's illuminated, but it's not illuminated, if that makes sense. And it it freaked me out. I kind of blew it off as maybe it was me just dreaming, but I, I vividly remember this figure. But that even if that wasn't what I saw at my house, there was a, a shelf that I used to put these cars on. Now, if anybody knows me, I'm, I'm kind of OCD. Everything has to be in order. So all my vehicles had to be pointing the same direction. And there was only one car on that shelf that I made and I made it in my grandpa's wood shop. And I would wake up in the morning and that car would be turned the opposite direction. And it happened time after time after time. I couldn't ever explain it. It doesn't sound scary, but I mean, it still kind of freaks you out. What did scare me is after I had moved out of, of the house, moved in with a friend of mine, and there's an area of, the, of town that uh, is very historical. If you're familiar with um, the Battle of San Jacinto and where uh, Santa Ana had had uh, 
surrendered. Well, anyway, the, it was really close to that area where uh, where I was living. And I had looked out of the window one evening and I saw somebody run across the yard. And so automatically we're like going after them. You know, you don't yeah. want somebody breaking into your stuff. And it went to the to the fence and disappeared. Now, if somebody had jumped the fence, they would have had a long drop because there is a uh, uh, this is like a concrete waterway, and it's very deep. So you you jump off that, you're breaking a leg. No ifs, ands, or doubts about it. And uh, also. I had woke up one night with the stereo coming on. Now, the stereo I had was one of those older models with the big old square button. You have to push it in to turn it on. So it's not going to be a power surge that makes this thing come on. But I mean, no, nobody else is in there to turn it on. How the heck did it get turned on? Well, that just kind of piqued my curiosity. And I, I kind of kept that to myself for years. And then you remember Ghost Hunters came on TV. I'm excited. I'm watching it. And I thought, man, that's that's what I want to do. And I said, one day I am going to meet those guys and I'm going to investigate with them. Well, fast forward some years later, I you know, got divorced and I was single for several years. And then I, I met my wife, who I have now, Michelle. That's right. <clears throat> and we'd we had met online. We had talked for a month or so and finally decided we were going to go on a date. Anyway, the day we were going to go out, she texted me and she says, look, I have to cancel our date. Something came up. It's an emergency. I, I have to do this. And I'm like, oh, OK, I'm figuring, you know, somebody's blown me off again and <laughs> you know <laughs> my luck but it, she kept texting me and so finally i got the nerve to ask her you know how why did you uh cancel our date but you're able to text me all night long it took about 10 15 minutes and she finally answered me she says well i'm gonna have to tell you something um i, don't, I hope it doesn't break the deal but uh i'm a paranormal investigator we had an an investigation come up it was an emergency because there was a child involved the child was getting hurt by a spirit and and so i had to go i guess she expected me to to think she was crazy and say i don't have nothing to do with you but <laughs> my my next thing was will you marry me now <laughs> Anyway, to make a long story short, I ended up joining the team that she was on, and um, a year later, we did get married, and things didn't work out so well with that group, and we ended up starting our own group, and the rest is history. Man, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> now you're married doing what you love, you know, and, you know, paranormal activity, like, it's a taboo thing, and I think... You know, one of my first, you know, first of all, I've always been fascinated with paranormal uh, movies. You know, Patrick Swayze, Ghost, that was, a, you know, that's a classic. Everybody knows that one. Uh, but then you also have, you know, Poltergeist. Uh, you have mm -hmm. Paranormal Activity, the movies. Uh, and it, it's a huge thing. And I remember my earliest memory of this. I remember my mom used to tell me this when I was younger, about like 10, 11 years old, where I first grew up with her in, in Manhattan. She used to tell me about how she felt the presence of her mother who passed away uh, in the house. And even my sister, they used to, she used to tell me that, like, uh, they'd be sleeping in the living room and all of a sudden, you know, the toilet would flush um, and things would just happen that had no explanation. It's like, you know, I'm in the house by myself. Why is the lights flickering? Why is the toilet flushing? Why are things moving? Um, and, you know, it was it was funny. One time I remember college, I came home uh, for break. And I remember my dogs, I had two dogs, Neil and Lady, shout out to them, love them. Uh, but 
I remember they used to always at night, usually around one, two o'clock, they just sit and stare at the bathroom. Like they they wouldn't move. They just stand there still. And I always mm-hmm. thought it was weird. And you know, my older brother used to say, Yeah, uh, this place is haunted. And he, I think he told me at one point he saw uh his grandmother, um, which is our grandmother, uh walking um in, in the kitchen. And I know a lot of people think it's is weird, they don't believe it. But you know, I'm not gonna lie, I used to be a skeptic about it. I used to thought people was, you know, just full of crap. And then, like I said, I had that experience at college where I remember I saw a figure. It was like uh I don't even remember how to describe it. It was dark, but I remember seeing like a man uh with a football jersey on. Um, because the urban legend was about a football player who died at, at, at in the in the um apartment um um that the school had. And I remember seeing that and I never forgot that image. And I used to think maybe my maybe I was sleepy. Maybe I had a little too much caffeine. I had a little much too alcohol. But I just I, I can't get that image out of my head. Um so for you, how was that journey, you know, meeting your wife and, and getting into it? What were you a little skeptic at first? Did it take you a while to to warm up to it, you know, when you started doing it? How how was that for you? Well, I'll tell you, I was very excited to get into it. And I, I've, I've witnessed things that uh, you, you have to be there. Okay. But I do have some evidence and I get, I get excited about that. At the same time, I'm also a huge skeptic, meaning I can usually pinpoint what is causing whatever's happening to happen. But when you have video evidence and you have audio evidence, it's kind of hard to refute. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we'll have investigations where you'll get some good evidence and then you'll have those where it seems like nothing's happening. When you have those that seems like nothing's going on you start to kind of question yourself and say is this real did i experience it and then something happens and it's and you can't refute it then all of a sudden excitement comes back interesting Mm -hmm. you know i will say you know watching the super i know it's cheesy i know it's (laughs) cheesy but Supernatural has made me, uh, anybody who hasn't watched it, you know, Justin Akles, Jared Padalecki, great show, uh, 15 seasons. And they deal, especially the earlier seasons, they used to deal with that type of stuff, ghost, uh, you know, and they used to talk about how, like, a lot of times they were holding on to something specific or, you know, they, you know, they just never went to the afterlife. And, you know, everybody's going to have different opinions on that. But, you know what, I, I do think... You know, when I started reading, so, you know, part of, you know, acting for me is I like to read about productions. Uh, uh, so, you know, when they shoot in these type of movies, all types of movies, but especially paranormal ones, you know, I read a lot of them. And I think, was it a, a medieval horror based off a true story, if I'm not mistaken? It is based off a true story, but it's not exactly what you see in the movies. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they, you know, they amped it up, you know, but. Yeah, of course. I think. I think it is true. You know, I've heard so many stories of people saying, like, you know, they've seen things, they've heard a relative in the house, you know, they've seen the figure walking. And it, it, it's kind of taboo because a lot of people think it's, you know, it, it's, it's baloney, you know, just not the Ghostbusters, right? You know, but right. I do think some of it is true. And I think a lot of it was, you know, like I said, watching Supernatural and, and seeing how they did it. Now, granted, it's a TV show. You know, it's going to be a little more campy and and hammed up. But I do think there is a thing now. You know, we hear about haunted houses, you know, people moving into houses that people died in and, you know, unexplained things are happening. Um, And a lot of these movies, some of them not, but a lot of them are based off some type of significant uh, significant, um, thing that happened that that, that was true. so just tell me a little bit, because I'm actually not too familiar with, you know, uh, that type of line of work. So what would, you know, what would a typical day for you be like, you know, when you're out in the field and doing that type of thing? Well, when we first get there, we, of course, will go around the house and we'll we'll check things uh, like uh, exposed wiring, because that'll put off 
that electro electromagnetic field and some people are very sensitive to it right um there's there's all kinds of things just kind of look for that may be out of place another thing we'll do is i will have an emf detector and i go along and i i try to see if there's any hot spots in the house sometimes that will affect your equipment uh, one thing we found out that those night vision cameras, if you walk in front of them, it'll set your EMF detector off. Um, sometimes if you've got too much equipment, electronic equipment in one area, it'll set it off. Uh, I've gone up in in some houses in their attics. I, there was uh, a place in, was, I think it was in Baytown, Texas. They it was that old wiring that had the 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 cloth uh, covering on it, mm -hmm. and you know this you're talking that was probably 1930s, you know, and they'd actually cut some of that out of the way, and somebody had wrapped wire around it to uh, a, a light, and was using that to light up the, the attic. Well. I mean, you got crazy EMF coming off of that. So if you get a pretty good baseline of the house, you know where the hot spots are, you kind of know where to avoid. Uh, and then we kind of will ask people, you know, where's the most activity going on, that kind of thing. And so we'll set cameras in that area to try to, to you know, catch whatever's going on. Um, just, I mean, little things like that. Um, get a, a a history of the house we we have a guy who actually knows how to research homes you can you know um who's owned it if there's anything significant that's happened there whether it be a, a you know somebody died or a murder something along that line and we also use uh, a, a psychic medium I have one specifically with our team, but I have brought some from the outside to to get a feel for the place. And they are very, very helpful. Now, I used to be very skeptical about mediums. I I didn't believe in that stuff. I thought a bunch of malarkey, you know, some kind of parlor trick until I met the one that works with us when you hear people say they, they tell you stuff that there's no way they could have known. This lady, first time I ever met her, she was telling us specific things. There's no way she could have known. And it's she's made me a believer. She'll go in and I'll give you a quick example. And there was a house that uh, she said that she was getting uh, a, a person coming through that she was an ant type figure that she uh she had been kind of excommunicated from the family and she had had a child out of wedlock and the child was killed and just given all this detail well the the lady that lived there she goes nope nothing like that there's no one in our family like that well a few days after the investigation she called me and she said um i talked to my mother and i didn't know that she had a sister who used to party and run around and sleep with men and the family didn't want to have anything to do with her anymore. And she had had a child out of wedlock and the the child had been neglected to the point it, it passed away. And I was like, Oh my God, how do you get that specific details when even the owner of the house didn't even know that, you know? So you, you've got all these different factors that, that come in and I, I'll i try to, um, I don't want to say provoke, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I'll, I'll try to do something to, to have the spirit react. Okay. I don't provoke a spirit because that is disrespectful to me. Um, I mean, this person's already died and trapped here. Why would you? further aggravate them you know you wouldn't want that somebody doing that to you i'm curious i don't mean to cut you up so how no, sure. like how, how do you how do you uh you know um antagonize or uh poke a 
a spirit. Well, if you've ever watched Ghost Adventures, I have watched well, a uh, episode or two. Yeah, the, they used to go in and they'll say, you know, hey, you think you're so tough, you know, come and come and hit me, you know, you 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 hit women and stuff like that, you come hit me or you just they do crazy stuff like that. Um, you know, act like they're real tough and they're not scared and oh, you know, you 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 have no power here, you can't do anything to me and just trying to aggravate them and I I just feel that's disrespectful. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it's it's fascinating, you know, this type of stuff. It's it's something that, you know, it's still a little taboo in a sense, but you know, I do think we are we're moving in, into a society now where people are willing to embrace certain things and talk about certain things. Do you think um this is something that, you know, people are really starting to uh acknowledge because you know for for the longest a lot of people used to think you know uh, it's a load of crap especially mediums now as someone who's you know didn't managing and stuff like that i do know there's some of them that just send it for cash but i do think there are some genuine ones and i think sometimes you see people who are only doing this type of stuff you know what you're doing or, or, or psychics who are just doing it for cash and they don't really care about it and it it ruins it for you know the the true believers. Uh, do you mm-hmm. think it's becoming more accepted in, in society, like to to talk about this stuff and and really uh, seek out advice? Because h- how do people find you to to um, you know go in their house or their apartment and and do this type of thing? Because I'm curious. I never you know met someone who does it before. Well, as far as people asking us, they will either find us on social media or word of mouth. Uh, um, and as far as it being accepted, I believe there, there's going to be a day where it's going to be taught in school and in colleges. And the reason why I say that is, um, I had, I used to interview just about all of them that you've seen on television, ghost hunters, dead files, uh, those kind of folks. And I got to be friends with Mustafa Gadalori, who he came in the, the the second iteration of the ghost hunters and him and Brandon Alvis, uh, they, they've, they've got a show that's going to be coming out soon, but Brandon is probably the most scientific person <laughs> I've ever met <laughs> as far as this stuff goes. And what they do is they have got this equipment. It's a, uh, based on photon technology where you get a more finer picture of what's out there using photons. And this is something that you can't refute. There's nothing that's going to make this machine do something different or, you know, you can, you can make an EMF detector go off easily by, uh, flipping the switch on a, on a walkie talkie or your cell phone going off, but this equipment's not going to do that. So when you see the stuff that they do, it's going to make you believe that it's going to become a, a, a part of science. It's not going to be a, a taboo thing anymore. It's gotten to where I, I think a lot of people are, are getting bored with it. Because there's so much out there. I mean, every time you turn around, there's a new TV show with a bunch of paranormal investigators. And everybody and their brother goes and gets an EMF detector and a camera and they're ghost hunters. You know. Um, And I think a, a lot of people do hurt what we're trying to do. I think Ghost Adventures, as much as I know a lot of people love them guys, I think shows like that actually hurt what we're doing because a lot of the stuff they do is fake. Okay. They've got some producer in the next room who's knocking on the wall or throwing something across the room. Right. I'm sorry, but every investigation that you go to is not going to have 200 hours of all this great evidence. It's just not going to happen. 
I can't tell you how many hours I've sit there in the dark and not a thing happens. <laughs> I, I mean, it's seldom that you get something really good. In fact, when you go to my social media, you won't find a lot of evidence on there because I am that critical of the things that we find. If I have a doubt, I'm not going to put it out there. And even the stuff that I do, I'll ask people, hey, have you experienced this? What do you think it is? You know, it, do you have an explanation for this? Um, if I can tell you about the 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 first team that I was with, we went to a, a part of Texas. It's pretty historical. Um, it's Spring, Texas. It's going to be north of Houston. And there was a house that we went to. the The medium that went there found out that there was a, a, a little girl that was on the property. Her name was Farmer. And further research, we found out that there was a girl who had been quote unquote adopted because it wasn't a legal thing to do back then. But uh, the uh, the family uh, had had farm workers there who were black and this little girl was white. Her parents had passed away and this black family had adopted her and take, you know, taken her into their home and farmer liked to do all kinds of stuff around the house. And then when um, me and my, my buddy Rodney were on the second floor, all the ladies were downstairs watching the video of us doing our little investigation we sat down in this room and I, I tell you what, I, I've had, you know, problems with my feet before, but I felt like my foot was on fire. I didn't think of anything of it. I just thought it was me. And you can refute this. That's fine. I'm, I'm not saying this is concrete evidence, but when I told the ladies that they saw started giggling and I'm like, what's so funny and they said oh we saw you there sitting in the dark barefooted and we told farmer to go tickle your feet <laughs> <laughs> and at that time that's when it happened you know well i ended up in this one room by myself and i didn't notice anything while i was up there but the, the ladies saw something fly around me and disappear I swore up and down it was a bug, but when we watched the video, there was another lady who was videoing that video with her cell phone, and at the point where this thing flew behind me, her phone picked up a voice that said, that was me, <laughs> and <laughs> I've got a copy of that on my, my channel, by the way, if anybody wants to check it out, yeah, yeah. Um, shameless plug there uh, <laughs> i saw that <laughs> and there was when i was on my own or me and michelle were on our own we were at a house and i'd set up in this one room and what looked like a bug to me flew into my chest and out of my back and you can see that on the video there was no audio to that i wished i had audio at that time but the the medium told me that a fairy seems to follow me everywhere I go. Whenever I do these investigations, like a guardian angel type character for me. Now, to me, that's like, oh, whatever. You know, I don't believe in all that stuff, but it showed up several times. Um, I, I, I wished I had more of those videos of these things flying around me, but it's it's crazy. Now, if somebody can tell me what else it could be, you know, I'm I'm up for it. I'm not going to debate you on it. I'm I'm just saying, hey, this is unusual activity. I can't explain it. If you can, please tell me. So, whew, did I get all that out? <laughs> you did get it all out. And, uh, you know, I, th this is a conversation, you know, that. I was interested and intrigued by because like I said, it is still taboo. Um, but you know what? But before we we continue, because we got a lot more stuff coming at your way, um, 
We're going to take a, just a little short break, bringing our sponsors, and we'll be right back with my man Kyle Yates. 